Rock and roll, huh? Yeah. Five after. Amen. Rachel, there is some sheets right here, so somebody forgot theirs. So they don't have a they just have about ten. They'll be all over the place tonight. Do we, do we have a few more downstairs or is this yes. well they got started a little late but they got used to the other time I, yeah. I've never promised that anything other than about 6 30 because we can't get here that early from where I live some had got used to the other times before so there's no no food up there but you can save it for later Oh, Pastor Brian, hi. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, so does anybody remember where we're at tonight? The fruit of the Spirit is not the evidence of the All right. Fruit of the Spirit. Yep. On your shoes. On our shoes. Printed off for everybody tonight. Also. Yeah. Amen. Well, we're going to open with prayer requests tonight. Does anybody got any prayer requests? Price. My grandpa. Your grandpa. Amen. Oh my goodness. Well, the HVAC guys were here again today. Finally, they didn't do it, but I just noticed they had our stuff cranked. Way down. Yeah. I have it set permanently. <laughs> that's not what it is. So bear with me, and I'll. Although it feels good to me. It feels good to me. Too. <laughs> but they've got it as low as they'll go. It's kind of freezing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's freezing. Can I come through there, Pastor Brooke? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we uh, we are live though, just so you know, the whole world is watching. <laughs> Amen. There's more than what you think on there. I promise you. There's quite a quite a following on there around the world. We have some in other countries that get up in the middle of the night and just to be with us. Hi. Oh, sorry. Glory. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, we got that to do. Well, this is just what they wanted to watch, me adjusting all the thermostats. <laughs> Are you impressed that I can do it from my tablet, I should ask? Yeah, yeah. Respond online. You know, mm -hmm. Any other prayer requests tonight? We have Bryce's grandfather. Anybody else? Put your head split it. Brother James. Uh, my parents, James and Carol. All right. Myself, thanks. Yourself, all right. Yes, ma'am. I just keep having to get deeper clothes. It's hard for me to not have the big ones that have lost me so it's been a trouble. Amen. So I just need a few strings to hang with them and get them here. Yeah. Uh, blessed are they that mourn. I bless all of them, so now I don't know. Blessed are they, they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say could have. He said they would be. And so demand upon the word for the comfort of the Lord. So it's for that. Um, for those that are in the, the Navy who the, have a wildfire, that they will be in the vicinity. All right. Sister Michelle. Yes, uh, for family and friends. Family and friends. Uh -huh. Just wanted to jump higher or what? 
You have not because you ask not because you ask and listen. I don't pray those kind of prayers. So. Oh, um, I want them to be encouraged and healed. Are they saved? Yes. Yes. You're positive? Because <laughs> if they ain't saved, nothing else you pray is going to matter. And if they're not living 100% out yes. for God, then you can pray all you want. You're not going to change what they're bringing on themselves because they're not out for the cover of God. Okay. So when you pray for people, the first thing you do is you pray for their salvation. salvation unless you're 100% sure, and then you can stand in faith for them. Moses stood in faith for people that wasn't saved, and he got moved on their behalf. But the first thing you have wants to do is to get people saved. Great. So I'm, I'm using this moment for a teaching moment. Because whenever we pray things, so many times we pray willy-nilly all over the place, and we wonder why God doesn't respond. Well, God's right. bound to his word, and he always responds. But we have to we have to pray according to the word. Amen. Do you see what I'm saying? Pray for them to be saved. Yes. Amen. Sister Joyce. I want to pray for my son Larry. I don't like saying this in front of everybody, but get off the city party and get closer to God. Amen. Amen. We are, I have been praying for him. I'll continue. Sister Heather, then Kyle, then Jenny. Uh, the guy in my chair part for him to come back to Jesus and be a believer and be a child. Amen. Brother Kyle. Continue to give it for this girl. Amen. Yeah, she's out of the hospital now. Oh, my mama is, and she's oh. home. And I guess there's just too much corn dust up here. <laughs> That's what we're all blaming it on. Brother James. This is a lot of lost souls in California. I'm going to pray for them. I'm trying to be an actor, just trying to get this world moving. I'm trying to do a world production. That's what I want to pray for their soul, their salvation. I'm trying to get us lost and use the technology the wrong way. Amen. I'm going to pray. Yeah, most definitely. And the kids are having a fabulous time. They've been having some phenomenal moves of God. So I'm so excited when they get back this Friday night and uh, Friday afternoon. I don't know. It'll be sometime. I've been traveling so much it just kind of runs together. Um, Lord. Pastor Brian, thank you for that because I never really think of it uh, thank you for that reminder because I I need to pray specific. Yeah, I hope you didn't think I was being hard. It's something uh -huh. I've taught for years. No, like I just haven't it. taken prayer requests around here in a little while. I have other people doing it, and I like to inject that wisdom in because mm -hmm. there, there's there our yeah our, our prayer is powerful, okay. but so many people just like shoot it off into the neverlands and it's not lined up with the word, and they wonder where God's at. Right. And right. so that's why I did just a little bit of teaching. The first thing you always want for someone is salvation. And if you ain't sure, then you should pray until the, you are sure. Okay. It's not nothing to risk about. Mm -hmm. And whenever someone's truly saved, you will know it, they will know it, and the whole world will know it. Yes. Because the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean you're praying something bad upon them. That means you're praying for the only thing that's going to change and help them. Sister Bonnie. Go ahead, Sister Joyce. Go ahead, Sister Bonnie. Well, we're just bringing the child in the way they should go, and our children have been trained, so I pray that they're old enough now. Don't so turn to go kids. Thank you. Amen. Sister Joyce. I want prayer for, for uh, Michelle Coffee. Sister Michelle. Because the stroke has messed with her mind a little bit, and I want her mind to get better. Amen. We've been praying for her and we will continue to. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Is Chris and Deb and them, they're all not here tonight? Or they? No, Deb. Deb. I'm the only one. I don't work here six years. So okay. Deb is here. I didn't mean to call them out. I just didn't know if they were downstairs. Or... Yes, I mean, it's been on the bed for six years. All right. We'll be praying for them. I'm so pray for the young men that still lost that city that they will find you in the Lord. Praise God. Well, how many love the Lord tonight? Amen. 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 Amen.
Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 22 through 24 says, Whosoever, so I look at your neighbor and say, I'm a whosoever. It says, They can have whatsoever that's, that lines up with the promises of God that they ask and pray and believe. I added a little, little paraphrase, that, paraphrase there for you. But you know what? If you don't believe it, it does really nothing to pray. It doesn't mean that God can't hear you. God reigns on the just and the unjust. But I'm talking about surefire things that move mountains. There's a surefire way that you can pray that you don't have to wonder if God heard you. You don't have to wonder if something's going to happen. Now, it may still take some time, but the number one way is when you ask for something, which I haven't done this here in a while. I used to, do, I did it for years and years and years. And uh, it, it used to make people really nervous. <laughs> and uh, they, 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 but they grew a lot. And you'll still hear a lot of the leaders pray this way around here. You have a prayer request. I want you to bring me the verse you're standing on for that prayer request. Okay. So if you're praying for someone that needs healing, uh, then you could go. You could go with a real easy one. First Peter two twenty four. You know they need salvation, that healing. But, so all healing first starts where in salvation. And then it goes so first spiritually, then then, then physically. All right. Mm -hmm. If you need comfort, you know those you can go to Matthew five twenty four. You can pray the, that one for those that are mourning, those that are going through things. If you have loved ones, we heard some that were there. Why? Because that when you're alone, you'll pray that same scripture and you'll stand in faith. You're not hoping God does something. You're standing on His word, expecting God to do something. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Do you see what I'm saying? So when we pray tonight, that's what we call getting your inspector connected to your believer. And usually when you hear me pray, I may not quote the chapter and verse, but you'll hear me pray the word of God over whatever I'm praying. But you, he's no respecter of persons, and you don't have to know a lot, but you do need to start searching it out. Every issue of life is found in the word of God. There's nothing you're going through that God doesn't have the promises and answers to in the word. That's why the body says study, the Bible says study to show yourself approved, a workman rightly dividing the word of God. Are you going to get it all overnight? Absolutely not. Sometimes I didn't think I would ever get it. But I kept doing my part, and then God, which allowed God to keep doing his part. Amen. And one reason why I teach so much, I, I have a whole thing I teach on prayer. How many know that the Lord's Prayer teaches us how to pray? <laughs> You know, but first, he exalts God. He doesn't go into the throne room with his laundry list. I've come before you today to petition you to let you know all the things I need. First, you honor him, you respect him, you glorify him, and, you know. And then, you, by the way, it's more important to find out what's on the Father's heart than what's on your heart. And then after that, he may even have you pray for some things that don't even line up with what you were going to pray about. But as you're praying for his business, he's taking care of your business. Amen. Like, I used to pray a lot for what I was going to eat and what I was going to wear and pay my rent. But he said, if he knows how to take care of the birds of the air, how much more does he know how to take care of you? If you know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more do you know how to give it unto you? So the enemy will keep you uh, all the time praying for something that God's already done and make you frustrated. Instead of staying lined up with the word and learning to stand in faith and say, you know what, I'm going to take care of God's business because I know he's taking care of my business. Now, I didn't get there overnight, super faithful, all that, but I did try them and see. Amen. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. Mm -hmm. I left my bag downstairs. All right, they're in youth group. So, uh, when you pray that way, it's not if something happens, it's when. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says when you pray, don't come before God to making vain repetitions. Mm -hmm. Some people, they pray the same thing over and over. There's nothing wrong with making your petitions known, but there's a fine line to just doing something religiously that has no power. Because I'll ask you a question which will help you with that. You want to know how many times you should pray it? Did you really believe it the first time? You're still trying to build your faith up for it the second time. Did the enemy try to come and steal your seed when you said it? Or did you really believe it the first time? They're, they're, not that I won't pray and ask God for something again. 
but I'm just reinforcing what I believed already the first time. I'm not begging him still to do something that he's already done. It just hasn't come to completion. Yet. So when you pray, you got to ask for a specific thing, not just yeah yes that's i mean that's a very loaded subject but uh yeah it, you know the bible says if you ask him this you hit a miss you just okay. you know lord help me he says yeah uh, where would you like him that's a big thing okay. what word are you standing on you said those who you know if i need peace of mind the bible says those whose mind is stayed on him shall stay in perfect peace. Lord, help me to stay my mind upon you. Lord, help me to give a hunger for your word so my mind will stay on you so my mind will be in perfect peace. Boom! All of a sudden, perfect peace is upon you. Lord, my mind's everywhere. He said, you tell me. <laughs> do, do you see what I'm saying? The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so many times the enemy gets people frustrated because they're just all over the place instead of praying the word. And I'm not saying God can't hear you. You know, He's heard a lot of lost people that you know one bit of scripture with their heart. He judges the intentions of our heart. But that doesn't mean we don't need to fine tune our hands. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so uh, for years, I didn't know all those verses, but I, I prayed specifically. I stood in faith. And, but I, I did start very early on finding scripture for every issue I had in my life. Now I'm going to tell you, if you really start doing that, you're going to irritate people around you. Because they're going to ask something here and say, oh, no, 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 no. Like, well, you just got a scripture for everything, don't you? <laughs> well, actually, I do. That's, you know, <laughs> yes. I've got, I got medicine for everything. And you don't look like you're getting some of that out of some of you. Amen. So, you have not because you ask not because you ask him how do you believe God will actually meet you here heaven going to make heaven and earth will meet you here tonight and, 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 and move upon your behalf amen. Amen. amen amen he he's not too big to, to minister to you but the key is he's also not an ogre you have to let him also so many people want to hold on to stuff I just wanted you to take care of that one thing. He said, well, you asked me to heal you. Uh -huh. So we're going to have to get into some of that stuff that hurts so I can heal that up. See what I'm saying? So many people say, no, I didn't ask for that. Well, here you did. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Because he's a good daddy. He wants to take care of it. It's a little long, a little much tonight, but I pray you've got something out of it. We're going to pray. And uh, mostly I heard a lot of people that needed salvation and, and healing. And uh, <coughs> pretty much that could take care of the whole list of stuff tonight. And we want God to move on our kids at camp to continue to fill them up. Amen? Amen. And uh, we want God to minister to you that are here tonight. You didn't just show up here because you didn't have no better place to go. You know, I saw you wanted to come and freeze with me tonight, but it was one over there. <laughs> that one says 75 that one says 68 you know we, we spent a small fortune on them but we we still don't have a lot of control of this but we will hopefully get there in Jesus name amen y'all got your verses in your mind you're going to stand up if you don't have a verse and you want a verse raise your hand we will help you you got to tell us what you're praying for. Um, for salvation for um, my family and friends. Amen. Well, it sounds like they need a Damascus Road experience. Where God just puts them in a place where there's nowhere they can deny that there's a God. He just shakes everything right around. Them. So you don't have to know the chapter and verse. You can just pray for your family to have a Damascus Road experience like Paul had. Okay. And say, there's a whole bunch more we can go, but there's one. Anybody else need a verse? Going once. Some of you are just really big chickens. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Like the one where they set out the fire by the angel. Well, you're you're into an area 
that's probably a little above the pay grade of those things because uh, you're talking about national consequences and things now. We could pray that no one is harmed, that a life is lost, but that we would also need to go before the Lord and see why is there uh, that going on in Canada. Why, what is God's intention with that? He allowed that to take place, and what's he trying to do with that nation? Not to say God wants to hurt anybody, but not saying I have those answers. I'm just saying a lot of people pray about those things, and then a lot of things will happen because there's much more deeper things usually going on in that place. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, James 1 5 says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him come to the Father without their faith wavering, and it shall be granted unto them. So you can stand in faith and say, Lord, you said if I would ask, you would give me wisdom that can only come from heaven. Yeah, I want, I want to take the wisdom for me. James 1 5 is your verse. You probably want to write it down and put it, get it in your spirit. Amen. And I hope you heard my part of that, Sister Rebecca. I'm teaching tonight, and I'm not trying to be, but I've seen a lot of people get frustrated because uh, now there is times when God's called us to pray for things, and, uh, but He gives us clear direction of what He wants from us. Mm -hmm. so. Somebody else tonight need a prayer for me, a scripture to go with your prayer. Lord wants. Sister Joyce. That Larry has faith and believes that he's going to get better. <clears throat> well, I would say you would first need to pray that Larry actually comes to the end of himself and gets saved. And uh, there's several scriptures for that. But, uh, you know, I believe Larry's already had a Damascus Road experience a time or two. And so, there's a, I believe Larry's in a place where he's a prodigal son and he needs to get tired of the pig pen. And so, say, Lord, I thank you that you're drawing Larry out of the pig pen and back to you, just like the prodigal son in Jesus' name. Do you see what I'm saying? So, we can, we can pray that. And that's, and there's a lot more, and we could go in depth, and I could give you four or five scriptures for each thing and do all this stuff, but God never made anything super complicated, and I'm not trying to complicate prayer. Right. I'm just trying to give you some things that makes prayer more effective for you all. Yes. Some of you all know this for a long time, Sister Buck. That's sometimes why he doesn't pray in the Spirit, because sometimes you don't know what needs to be done. Right. But, uh, Thankfully, we should study the word, though, so that we, because we have, the Bible says, prophecy comes and go, but we have a sure word now, which is the word of God. Amen. It's not. Anybody else tonight? Anybody here ever had to look for a job? Yeah. The Bible says if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. So would God tell you to do something without providing a way? God just tell you that to make all those men that are men are just wired to work every good man, and what do you mean just do that to make you feel bad? No, you can go, Lord. You said if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. So I'm going to demand upon the Word of God that you're going to lead me and guide me into that place you want me to be. Amen. One of the keys is stop trying about God. Jeremiah 20, 11, I'm going to give you a little more on that. It says that He has plans for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give a life in the future. I encourage people, years ago I was praying as a pastor, because you, 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 you're a pastor, you care for people, you want the best for them. And the Lord just gave me this little thing, he told me to tell people to be Johnny Appleseed, to be willing and surrender their life to him, and that his plans are better than their plans. Yeah. See, the world tells you, you got to look for this kind of best job, you got to look for the best 401k, you got to look for all these things. I'm here to tell you the best place is right in the middle where God has you, yeah. and wants you to be. And that is where you'll feel complete. Amen? Amen. Amen? So pray that and believe that. Why? How can you do that? He said, he, he said, listen, if he takes care of the birds of the air, how much more is going to take care of you? Amen. 
Y'all still with me? I know this is, I feel the anointing in this tonight. Um, so, God wants you to get your prayers answered. He is waiting for you to get your, and see, you know what else happens? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When I, when I started quoting those scriptures to you tonight, your faith came up whether you recognize it or not. It perked up inside you and you started putting a demand upon the word of God. Do y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Then he say, well, Lord, my, my mind. We said, those whose mind is stayed on him. You know, there was a time in my life I had to admit, my, I had a hard time keeping my mind on him. And it was a battle, and I had to go and ask for help. Amen. He said, what are some scriptures that he says that he would quench all the fiery darts of the enemy? Unfortunately, the enemy will keep trying to throw them at your mind. But he said, faith in who God is quenches them. And that when you pray that, that keeps the enemy at bay, and you start letting your mind get peace. Amen. Amen. All right? I'm going to pray, but I want to encourage you all with your newfound faith in the scriptures you have to pray yourselves. So and listen, uh, you don't have to be as loud as me. You don't have to out shout me. But uh, the Bible says you say unto your mountain. If you're saying something to somebody, you're not. <laughs> I see <seen> some. <laughs> well, man. If you don't have enough authority to even, you know, a mouse can't hear you. Listen, you don't have to shout, you don't have to jump, but you need to say to your mouth, by faith, according to the word of God, and then you pray that, and you expect God to do something. Amen. Amen. Amen? And he will. So I'm going to pray, and I want you guys to pray. That's why it's called, that's why when two or three come together, they're gathered in his name. Amen? And it's not that I'm not praying for you daily, I am. But something happens. It, it didn't say, call to your pastor to say to your mountain. Right. It said, you say to your mountain. Yeah. Anybody's faith coming up? Good. Right. Lord, we come before you tonight, God. Lord, I thank you for everybody that's here. Lord, I, I thank you as they release their faith tonight. I know that you will meet them here. And God, I thank you that uh, it, the faith is going to go in, in the sea and the ground. And their faith is going to grow 30, 60, 100 fold. And God, we pray for those that are lost tonight. Lord, we just pray you set your angels around about them. Lord, and you know what they have need of. Lord, some saved by fire, some saved by, by the soft uh, answer. And, and Lord, some you just got to slap upside the head. We don't know what they need, but you do. And we're releasing uh, the word of God tonight that accomplished that thing that it will save souls. And God, we thank you for those tonight that are that are hurting physically, spiritually, emotionally. God, you said you sent your word and you healed them. And God, we send your word tonight and we expect it to accomplish that thing that it did. And we say, be healed in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just thank you tonight, God, for those that are that they're even having mental battles, God. Lord, you said your mind who stays upon you is at perfect peace. Lord, even as pastor, I take authority tonight. And Lord, I speak to that chaos and I speak, demand it to break right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, there's the peace of God and the love of God. And Lord, I thank you that it's flooding all over them. And Lord, I thank you, God, that faith is rising them to stand up and keep a hold of what you've just done. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing with our kids. And God, I pray that you'll, you'll, you will even just, we, we just uh, speak faith and we blow embers on the fire of what the Holy Ghost is doing. And God, we thank you that you're preparing us as you're preparing them for they return. But God, that they'll be ready and we'll be ready. And we won't be a hinder to them. We'll be, a, we'll be one that blows upon the embers of what you've done in them this week. Lord, I thank you for the group of people that's here tonight. Lord, I pray that I step aside and you step in and God, I pray you'll help me to speak even the oracles of God tonight. And that everything we do and say here tonight glorifies you. Lord, I thank you for those that are grieving tonight, Lord. Uh, that uh, the spirit of grief, I just curse it right now. God, you said those that mourn, of course, should be comforted. But you said nothing about grieving. And so we break that tonight. And Lord, I thank you that you're sending a comforter under them. And so there's still a bomb in Gilead. And you're healing things up in Jesus' strong name. 
Falling out, so I already <laughs> forgot. <laughs> I was just not ready to. Y'all are alert. I was just ready to jump headlong in. Uh, uh, let's, yeah, Rach, will you grab the altar? Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And if you don't know that's in Revelations, that's a scripture. And so uh, you should also testify to yourself every day in the goodness of God. Sister Bob. We celebrate 38 years of marriage today. Oh. Oh. Happy anniversary. <laughs> That's awesome. Sister Heather. My neighbor has a thorn my lawn and it's in my trees. Oh, wow. Amen. Praise God. God is faithful. Anybody else tonight got a testimony of the goodness of God? Thank God for the rain. Yeah, thank yeah. God for the rain. More still here. Brother Jay. I had a lot of people try to help me out around the world and tell my story and give my testimony. I just want to say thank you. God took care of me every day. He was there. He didn't leave me. He helped me out. Amen. Amen. Good to have you here. Sister Rebecca. That's true for everybody. When your heart ain't right, ain't nothing right. And when you get it right, everything starts flowing right. Sister Joyce. Uh, I'm just glad that God has got me here and I'm alive. And I've got this easy problem. I have to overlook it. And be glad that I am alive. I'm here. Amen. Amen. Doing pretty good for 81. Yeah. And you're still not in that nursing home the devil tried to keep you in all, all right. those years, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sister Heather again. Yeah. I, I thought that neighbor didn't like you, but we were some friends. Amen. That's what happens when you think. It usually ain't so good. You yeah. should go on fast. <laughs> <laughs> the devil operates in thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. God operates out of facts. <laughs> I'll let you, I didn't mean to, I'm not picking on that, Sister Heather, but I just think that the more the body of Christ starts to realize that, the happier most people will be. Mm -hmm. You know, the spirit of suspicion is not a spirit of discernment. Right. One's demonic and one's from God. Mm -hmm. And most of the body of Christ, unfortunately, in the last several years, I've seen operate out of the spirit of suspicion. Because <laughs> one, one, here I'm going again, but one that operates out of, out of spirit that's been hurt, that's offended. They don't trust people. They're always up there, so the enemy's able to come in. The next thing you, you're you're making decisions based on things that you don't know are facts. So hey, maybe you're not super spiritual, but one thing you can do is don't make any decisions until you know all the facts. And I'm not talking about hearsay facts. Right. Don't know who that's for, but that's for glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, it's 7.40 almost, dear <laughs> Lord. We haven't even started yet. Did we take you off? Yes. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Oh, no, we're so sorry. <laughs> you said your anniversary, so that's weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for those that sowed into the kingdom of God. And Lord, I thank you for sowing back into them 30, 60, 100 fold, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. Lord, we thank you for taking care of, uh, Lord, all the all the bills of the house. And, Lord, you've seen all the things you've asked us to do. And, Lord, I thank you that you're bringing in uh, finances for the north, east, west, and south that will accomplish the very thing that you've called us to do. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Amen. Been a while since I've seen people are gone. Been a while since I've done all, all these different hats and praying and teaching you all to get a little more from Pastor who's still on. Glory to God. How many is glad to be here tonight? I know yes. I said it once. Amen. 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 How many do you think God's got something for you yet? Amen. 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 He, uh, so the fruit of the Spirit. Keep <laughs> back there. I didn't do it. That was it. The Holy Spirit says time to get on with it. 
Yes, sir. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is not the evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit. So many times people listen to others and not what the, whole, uh, the, what the Bible teaches. Now, I know I expounded upon this however many weeks ago that we were doing this, but I want to bring this to, uh, to the head again. The joy and the peace are all evidence of being filled. Those are, those are things that flow out of the Holy Ghost. But don't mistake that as the evidence of just having them because everything you acquire from God is by faith. It doesn't mean that you don't flow in these things, but he, during, back at the time that Brother Hagin wrote this book, uh, you have to, you have to understand it was a much different time with denominations and things. And there was people that if you got the giggles, you had the Holy Spirit. If you didn't get the giggles, you didn't get the Holy Spirit. Well, there's only one evidence at the beginning of the Holy Spirit, and that's speaking in other tongues. And sometimes you got filled with laughter right then, and sometimes you didn't. But here's one thing that's for sure, as that you eventually will, because that's part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But you can't, you can't say, well, I only spoke in two syllables. I didn't get the Holy Spirit. No, you spoke in two syllables. You got it. You just, there's just more of it yet to receive. But he goes on a very long tangent here because he was attacked. And so he, kind of like how I've done in times past when people want to start talking about drinking in the church and I've got several books on all that. I went on, I went on a few tangents throughout the, and I have enough scripture to sink a battleship. Anybody can testify for me of that? I'll get out the books and we'll do it again. I see some of you are putting your hands up. Please no. <laughs> but here's the thing. When you go over in a scripture, there's without a shadow of a doubt the truth becomes plain. So moving on here. So many times people listen to others and not what the Bible teaches, or sometimes people draw their own conclusions about Bible experiences, such as salvation or receiving the Holy Spirit, instead of relying on what the Word says. They want to accept their own conclusions instead of accepting what the Bible says. But we are living in a day and season, a little off topic, where this is more true. I, I, I've literally had people tell me, well, quit giving me Scripture. I just want to know what you think, and then I'll decide for myself. I'm like, and I'm like, uh, I can't do that because my whole life is based on the Word of God and everything I say is out of the Word of God. And it, it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what I think. It only matters what the Word of God says. Amen. And when you stand before God, you can't go up there and go, well, I thought this and that one preacher thought that. <laughs> They're going to stand and give an account for what the Word of God says, period. Everybody has an opinion, but only the Word of God matters. Right. My opinion don't matter. Your opinion, your opinion don't matter. Only what the Word of God says. Amen. Amen. For example, some people mm -hmm. argue against the baptism of the Holy Spirit and say, but a lot of these full gospel folks who speak with tongues don't have the fruit of the Spirit as they ought to have. Therefore, they cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Meaning, and I saw this growing up, there were some Baptist folk that didn't have the Holy Spirit, but they were full of the Word of God, and they held their they held their flesh man in much better standard than a lot of Spirit-filled folks, which then made them turned off to the Spirit-filled folks. So they said, what could they possibly have that I want? They can't even bridle their tongue. Big smile. <laughs> and then he gave us all the bad name. But... The truth is, is they had the Holy Spirit. They just wasn't let the Holy Spirit work in them, and they probably were quenching him. And if you stuck around a few more years, you would see where they were just dried up prunes. Big spot. Y'all see where I'm going? Yeah. And so, therefore, they could not be filled. So, however, the fruit that Paul talks about in Galatians 5, 22 and 23 is not the fruit of the baptism of the Holy Spirit at all. It is the fruit of the re created human spirit. Here Brother Hagin always jumps around and tries all these things. If you've seen, if you've taken our, my basic Bible doctrine course which we're going to have again uh, I'm hoping by at the uh, beginning of July we'll be doing it for all new members. Hopefully some of them keep coming but even as one I will teach it. But uh, we call that the spirit of Christ. When you get saved, you get the Spirit of Christ in you. 
It's a phenomenal thing. It's not nothing to sneeze home about. It's what the thief on the cross got. But here we see there's also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So with the Spirit of Christ, how many know the three in one? You get the you get the fruits of the Spirit. Why? Because who do they emulate? Whose character is now inside of you? Jesus. And those are all fruits that Jesus had. But if you want to put the super to your natural, get filled with the Holy Ghost, and really watch those gifts grow. Y'all still flowing? See it? With me now? So Galatians 5, 22 through 23. How many know you got to read the Bible? You can't just talk about ideas. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, you know, I can remember when I came back to God, I was very no problem about it. I was legalistic even because I've been on the world and I was looking for somebody that could really live the word. And I, I had trouble finding very many. And, uh, but how many of these aren't suggestions? These are things that should be evident in our life. But it doesn't mean you're perfect in them. It means you grow with them. Does fruit grow or does it just come out the perfect size? <laughs> it grows. I want you to hold on to that as we study this. Because the enemy, when you start talking about these things, usually either he beats you up one side or down the other, depending on which side of the growing stage you're at. But I want you to remember that fruit always grows. Sometimes it even comes to harvest, and then they have to do some, something called pruning. And then next time it gets even bigger harvest. So it's not that we've ever arrived in the spirit of Christ where we're not in a stage of growth. Because fruit always grows. And I can still remember the first time I got this revelation, I think I was dealing with temperance and long-suffering. And I thought, to be honest, I was an arrogant young minister, and I thought I had arrived. And I'd already battled all that, and I'd already overcome all that. So why in the world was I God met with, why was I dealing with this again, God? <laughs> and you know, I got enlightened. <laughs> Figured out that I was not near as far along as I thought I was. And to be honest with you, I don't mean this, I'm not trying to no fake bravado. The closer I get to God, the less that I know, and the more I'm just happy that he uses a guy like me. But I do, I can tell you my fruit is much sweeter than what it was many, many decades ago. Yes. Yes. And if you'll let God, he'll do the same. But, so that's just the spirit of Christ. And so, you know, a lot of people in the world don't want to receive what spirit folks have because they're not even seeing the spirit of Christ operate in you. Y'all still with me? Yes. All right. So most Bible translators and scholars agree that the, the word spirit is erroneously capitalized in verse 22, and it should be spirit, indicating as the fruit of the born-again, recreated human spirit, which we call what? The Spirit of Christ. Everybody say it with me. The Spirit of Christ. So when you get born again, what spirit comes to live inside of you? The Spirit of Christ. Amen. And I went over that in depth and showed you all the word. If that's new to you, when we do basic Bible doctrine, you will get it drilled into you. Amen. Amen. So, uh, therefore, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 is talking about the fruit that should be in the life of every believer, not just in the life of spirit-filled believers. Amen? Amen. And I can remember some Baptist guys, they're like, well, I've got the fruit of the Spirit. What more do I need? What do you have that I don't have? You have problems just like I have problems. Well, I've got something that puts the super to my natural and lets me deal with stuff that would kill most folks. Mm -hmm. By the way, according to after Sunday's message, I'm down to one vehicle now, and it's the old Dodge. Oh, wow. So all the rest of them are out, but I we, we did go out and lay hands on the church van. It took quite a while. And the Lord gave me a little wisdom, and it fired up and drove all the way down and all the way back. Oh, so, uh, and it's going to go back there again Friday Amen. in Jesus' name. But, you know, I can tell you years ago, my frustration level would have been through the roof, and I, I don't even know if I'd have been able to preach Sunday morning. Ain't that sad for a man of God to say that? What kind of man of God is that? 
an honest one. But thankfully, I let the Spirit of God grow me. Do you see what I'm saying? And then when I came up here, I was able to check out, and I had that gift of the Holy Spirit, and His anointing was able to flow through me to minister to you all. And there's a difference there. Do y'all see what I'm saying? I'll drink up a little more in a minute. So, uh, therefore, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, just talking about the fruit that should be the life of every believer, not just the life of the Spirit for the believer. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches, John 15, verse 5. And so that's talking about what? The Spirit of Christ. The fruit of the Spirit listed in, Gal listed in Galatians chapter 5 is love. Believers who are filled with the Holy Spirit don't necessarily have any more love than Christians who are not filled with the Spirit for the simple reason that Jesus said all believers are to have love. By this all men shall know that you are my disciples if you love one to another. Now, over in 1 Corinthians and a few other chapters, it talks about all these wonderful gifts. He tells you to seek prophecy. We're going to, we're going to look at this. Seek, you know, do the words of wisdom, words of knowledge. He said, but the greatest gift there is, is love. If you don't have love, it's a sounding brass. Do you want to know why the world turned off the school gospel, spirit-filled church for so long? Because our love walk was not up to it. Because we were, people were walking around acting like they were superior to somebody else. When they were when they, when they had mastered their love walk, because they didn't slap you in the face already by you telling them what you had and they didn't have, and how much better you were than them. Big smile. You with me, still? Mm -hmm. But that but that doesn't mean that there's not something that God wants you to have more. But when it's the spirit of the living God, it doesn't make you more arrogant. It makes you more tender. Right. If you keep feeding the right thing. Amen. Which brings me to something else I taught a long time ago. I hope we have some long line watching tonight still uh, with us. But uh, a lot of people mistake getting the spirit of God on them during the church service. And not getting the Spirit, the Holy Ghost filled in them. A lot of people feel the anointing on them, but they don't get the Holy Spirit in them. And, and we've already we've been studying in depth, so you know, the only way you can know this for fact you have the Holy Spirit is the evidence of speaking in other tongues. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of people, they go home, they have the Spirit of Christ, they got it on them, and three days later, that stuff's run off of them, and they're just... Burr. Can't wait to get back to church. When you could be carrying that with you all the time, because your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, and He's wanting to reside in there twenty four seven, not waiting to get here. Amen. All right. So fruit grows on branches, and Jesus said, "Believers are the branches. Therefore, the fruit of the Spirit." grows in the life of the born again recreated believer because of the life of Christ resident developed within believers the branches. Uh, there's another uh, part inside of this that says if you abide in me I'll abide in you. And uh, so think about that for a moment. There was a season in my life when that verse really brought me comfort. Because listen nobody can pluck me off the vine I've got to cut myself off. And as long as I stay connected, he's going to stay flowing in me. Even when I'm imperfect, his spirit's going to keep flowing in me to make me better. Amen. But I'm here to tell you there's something even better than that. You can get the Holy Spirit, which will help empower you to overcome some of those things. But don't neglect that spirit, that fruit that's in you already. All you got to do is stay connected to the vine. You know, there's a reason why the enemy doesn't want people to come to church. We have such an influx around here. Uh, he doesn't want people here because when you're here, you're, you're encouraged. When you leave here, you feel good. You're all that. I guarantee you, each one of you had five million reasons why not to come to church tonight. And even some of them sounded pretty good. But you came, and now you're getting something. I tried to get out of it, but I couldn't find any bus to do it. <laughs> yeah.
every believer is to have the fruit of love. The Bible further states that we, every believer, know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. 1 John 3, 14. And the Bible says that you hate your brother and love God and you're a liar. When I was first honing my love walk, those were big, big scriptures that caused me to choke a lot. Because sometimes I was wanting to choke some of those that were supposed to be my brothers. In the world I came from, you know, you didn't disrespect, you didn't do this. There were things that happened if you acted that way. But I had to kill that whole old guy. And how he thought and how he operated. So that I could love the way that Jesus loved. And it took me a process, but it was well worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, now I don't have to think about it. I'm just going to love you and forgive you. And if you want to act that way, that's between you. Does that mean that I don't get frustrated sometimes? No, I do. But I've truly learned that I don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. With principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. And I take the fight where it belongs. Amen. It's not that I just lay down and take it. I take it where it belongs. You see the difference? Which causes me to love somebody. If somebody's so twisted up, the enemy's able to use them in such a way to cause some of the heinous things I've had to deal with, then my heart hurts for them. They need deliverance. Mm -hmm. They're on a path of destruction. They're going to split hell wide open. See, when you think that way, when you start letting that in, that causes you to have compassion for them. The enemy just wants you to see them screaming, spitting in your face, and all the things they're done, all the ways they're trying to destroy you, and all the stuff they're doing, and all the promises they broke, and all the money they cost you. And da -da 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 well, I forgive you. Jesus forgive me. That's not, I love you, man. Praise God. But I'm not going to sit here and let that spirit come up in my in my household, up in, up in the church, up in the place where I'm at. He just met his, he, he, he just messed up. Because I'm not going to get down there and rest around with this person. I'm going to go to the head with this thing. Praise God. And how can I do that? But the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead quickened my moral body. He said he put this treasure in earthen vessels. That's one reason why it's so important to be full of the Holy Spirit. You can't go, wait a minute. I need to fast and pray. Uh, give me about three weeks of church to get my life in order. And then I'm going to have to get filled with the Holy Ghost. So we can make it two and a half months and you come back and we'll talk. <laughs> it sounds funny, but a lot of people are dealing with the enemy that way. I want to encourage you that there's a better way. Anybody get anything out of this tonight? I got like three minutes left. You gave me a two for tonight. It's coming to Wednesday special. <laughs> Not the fruit of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, every Christian should have the fruit of the Spirit, regardless of whether or not he is filled with the Holy Spirit. And can we all agree on that? That through the Spirit of Christ, everybody should have the fruit. And I don't like to use the word. I know that's how it talks about here and labels everywhere fruit of the Spirit, but it's the it's the attributes of Christ. If you want, so your brain doesn't get all twisted up. I'm not trying to make it, but so your brain don't get all twisted up on the fruit of the Spirit here and this and that. And when you add the super to the natural, then these supernatural fruits of the Spirit. Because those there's something called supernatural joy. There's something called supernatural peace. They're even more than just this, okay? But we're talking about when you, uh, when, just because you have the attributes of Christ, which are the fruits of the Spirit of Christ, does not mean you have the uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. But when you do get filled with the Holy Ghost, the thing that uh, Brother Aiken here danced around didn't want to talk about because he was too busy defending that thing. I'm not saying bad about him. We're using his study guide. But uh, when you get that supernatural joy, as you've seen around here, that's more than just that. That's something that when the Holy Ghost comes in, it's like, whoo, and he said he would fill you, Romans 15, 13. We're not just pulling this out of our hat. Romans 15, 13 says he would fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. So now we're talking about a different gifting that only comes through the Holy Spirit because he puts the super to your natural. 
Y'all starting to get to understand? And I'm going to tell you, when I was a young minister, when I, was, when I told you I had to study all this, some of this stuff really worked me up. And the more I tried to ask people questions, the more people had more twisted answers. And it seemed like the more you studied, they, they turned you, they, somebody had this commentary. I'm like, well, that guy just used, he, he worked, used 40 pages just to uh, twist this up even more. And, and I really believe the Word of God's not that complicated because he, gave it, to, he want, gave it to us to understand. Amen? Amen. All right. Another fruit of the Spirit listed in Galatians chapter 5 is peace, which I've been talking about also. I didn't have any more peace after I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost than I had before. The Word of God says in Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified by faith in Christ, we have peace. Therefore, peace is a fruit that should be resident in the life of every Christian to the life of Christian within through the new birth. So when you get saved by faith, you get the peace of God that passes all understanding. But please, once again, Romans 15, 13, God says, hey, listen, God doesn't cause confusion. There's a supernatural peace that happens when you get to the end of your thing and you're full of the Holy Ghost, you like to haunt it, and all of a sudden it washes over you and every care of this world, every yoke is broken, and you're like, whoo, glory. And there's a supernatural peace. But if you're looking for that as confirmation, you got filled with the Spirit or you're saved, you're getting off off, off key. Because there is a there is peace that comes when you get saved. How many remember you before you get your heart to the Lord? You got the, his attributes, you got those things. You had peace. Everything that was upset and wrong, now all of a sudden you didn't know how it was going to have to work out, but you knew God was going to take care of it. But I am telling you that there's even more than that through the Spirit of Christ, but the Bible. But here's another one I've said for many years. I'm not familiar. But the Bible says signs and wonders follow them that believe, right? What about if you just started chasing after supernatural joy and peace? You would get off in a ditch. Mm -hmm. Instead of just expecting it, whenever you get low, Lord, thank you, you're filling me with all joy and peace. Ha 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 ha. I laugh at the devil like that. I got peace for it. No, oh, God didn't move today. I didn't really feel the joy or peace. It was an all right service. The message was good. God might have gave you everything you needed to go through that week and, and, and just dance through the minefields and you missed it all because you didn't get the right tingle you wanted. <laughs> but here's the good news. If you're full of the Spirit, full of the Word of God, God will not bless you. You can go and ask Him any time and He will fill you with joy and peace when you need it. T is when you, when he decides you need it. Here's, Lord help me. I want to go ahead and just go on and get a little more trouble. Because what happens with people that are chasing after, you ever seen, we used to call them glory hounds. They're people, they're just, they have no purpose. When God flows through you, the purpose is to give it out to somebody. The Bible says make a drink offering to those that are around you. And you have people that are so hungry after the anointing, they just go from one place to the next place to the next place. And you know what? They don't need it. They just like the feeling of it because their lives are miserable and not in order. So they're kind of like Saul wanting David to come around. Y'all still with me? But you, you can come to it every man that needs it. That means he knows when your soul is weary. And that may be every Sunday and that's okay. But there's certain times if you're a glory hound where it's not okay. I don't have time enough to teach the whole thing tonight. Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. You kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. There's more than enough, and he, he gives freely to every man that asks. And I want to always encourage you to ask. But I want you to ask with the intention of giving out. As long as you keep that right, you don't have to have a degree to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? There's people, there, there's been different times. We're one of the best kept secrets in Springfield. A move of God to get flowing strong here and people want to start coming in to see the show. Well, they don't stay long because it, we don't operate. We, I mean, we have a move of God all the time around here. It's not something we do, it's who we are. But we're also not a show. He fills us up for a purpose to go and do something. Amen. Amen. Anyway, I'm going to get in trouble. But are y'all still with me? Yeah. 
So peace. The word of God says in Romans 5, 1, I already read that. We have peace. Therefore, peace is a fruit that should be resident in the life of every Christian because of the life of the Christ within through the new birth. However, one thing we must understand about the fruit of the Spirit is just as with natural fruit, the fruit of the Spirit can grow and be developed in all believers' lives. Baby Christians, for example, don't produce and grow fruit all at once. After all, you don't expect a baby tree to produce fruit all at once. It takes time for a tree to mature, for the fruit on its branches to grow and develop. It's the same way with the baby Christians. That's why the reason why I'm so protective over baby Christians and people going along and expecting them to, well, they've got to wear this and they got to dress that way and they got to talk this way. Man, you didn't act that way when you got here. Don't fool me. I'm the pastor. We try to tell them how to be cleaned up. Let God clean them up. As a matter of fact, I look back when I first got saved, I myself might argue if I was saved or not the first year or so. I mean, I was. I wasn't doing drugs and alcohol and stuff, but to, 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 to the caliber that God calls me to live now, I was nowhere near there. But as I grew, those things got changed, and they didn't happen overnight. Amen? Amen. So we should be, uh, the Bible says, us elder and mature ones, we should be protect, protecting those baby trees and giving them a safe place to grow them. Amen. Not getting up and Anyhow, enough of that. Y'all get the idea, right? Yes. But how many know, here's, I, want to, I want to say, no matter how mature the vineyard is, there's always a season of growth and a season of pruning. And until Jesus calls you home, you're going to be going through those seasons. Why? Because God's always, I believe our wine is to get sweeter and sweeter as we grow in the Lord. But I want to grow with more and more in the power and the demonstration of who he is. Not so that I'm famous, but so that I can make Jesus famous upon the earth. Amen. Unfortunately, I seem to be in a season where I've been in a pressure cooker just so everybody can see how I'm going to respond. And praise God that the Spirit's been coming out. But uh, I can't say that I enjoy that for the record. I'm just thankful that the right stuff's coming out. But... I didn't have time to go, wait a minute, I need this sabbatical. I will come back when it's easier. When I got my act together, I'll come back around. Hey, y'all get what I'm saying. All right. Well, it's late. Well, y'all ready to speed read? Mm -hmm. We're going to get down to the ministry of laying on of hands. We're going to do this next little bit. You, I've already pretty well taught all this, so. A baby Christian can be filled with the Holy Ghost, however, and have power, and can even have the gifts of the Spirit operate his life. For example, for the, for the Corinthians were babes. Paul called them babes in Christ. And our brother could not speak unto you as, as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 1. Yet he also said, Ye come behind and no gift. 1 Corinthians 1 7. Therefore, even though the Corinthians were babes in Christ, and didn't have a lot of fruit of the Spirit evident in their lives, they did have the gifts of the Spirit operating in their lives. So the fruit of the Spirit are for holiness, but the gifts of the Holy Ghost are for power. So they had power gifts flowing, and they didn't even have their act together because they were still baby Christians, because God uses whoever he wishes when he wishes. And so you don't get to decide that. The only thing you need to see, if you see someone struggling as a baby Christian, no matter what kind of power gift they're growing in, our job is to help grow them up more. That was a mouthful if y'all still with <laughs> So you can be you can be holy without having much power, and you can have power without being so holy. Yet the combination of holiness and power in a Christian's life is best, and that's what God desires. And I call the holiness the gas that fuels the anointing, fuels the gifts of God. And a lot of people because the gifts and callings are without repentance after God clothes them, and a lot of people don't have no more gas left. Because they stop maintaining a lifestyle that can support the anointing. That's true. <clears throat> I've seen plenty of people who are wonderful Christians who have marvelously developed the fruit of the Spirit in their lives, but they have no power in their lives whatsoever. Then I know of other Christians who are certainly powerhouses of God, but it's obviously they need to grow a little more fruit of the Spirit in their life. Amen? Amen. So anointing can take you a lot of places, but it will only keep you where your character is built for you. But let me tell you, character ain't something you can fake. People are out long enough, they learn who you really are. And uh, so you can't fake it, you've got to do it. But, you know, the key 
is for us just to learn to live right, let God grow in us, and uh, let Him use us. Amen. And I've seen both. Where people, I've seen people that they have the fruit of the Spirit, they know the Word of God, but they're a lot, they haven't pursued, produced one soul in 40 years. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying that God, when the Bible said He, he, gave, he gave seed to the sower, and He talked about the ones that He gave these to, what He's expecting so on. The one that knew He was a sovereign God that just went and put the seed and stored it up, He was not happy with that. He wants you to be Johnny Appleseed with the gifts that He's given you. You don't decide who deserves it, who doesn't deserve it, who's good enough, who's not good enough. You just spread that stuff like wildfire to go eat gospel. Amen. 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 So uh, we will continue on the ministry of laying on of hands next week. If the Lord wishes and doesn't come back. And I pray we had some visitors online tonight and some of our Congregation that wasn't here tonight, I pray they were on there. The Lord, give us a shout out, let us know. I'd like to know you're there. So, uh, all right. Sister Rachel, will you grab the microphone? If you're here tonight and you got something out of tonight, let me know. Lift up your hand real big. Sister Rebecca. Fruit always grows. It doesn't come out the perfect size. Amen. You know, one of the best watermelons I ever ate was one of the ugliest ones I've ever seen. <laughs> As long as you are in Christ, there will be pruning and there will be seasons of harvest. Amen. Amen. Sister Heather. Uh, no, matter, no matter how mature you are, um, there's always a season of growth and a season of pruning uh, so that your wine will be sweeter and sweeter. Amen. Sister Forgive me. I've been called a lot more than that. I caught it. Just for the record, I did not say it. That's usually over here. And you're not the only one I've done it with throughout the year. Brother Kyle. Um, I, I learned tonight by going through this that um, the fruit of the Spirit is for uh, the holiness of the, the gifts of the Spirit of her um, the power. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else tonight? You got something out of tonight? Brother Don. You know, what you mentioned about the Spirit of Christ versus the Holy Spirit, I think that's a, that is a nugget that really needs to be taught you know, in the church. You know, I, don't, I don't know that I've ever heard anybody teach that before. I don't, I don't recall that, so yeah, that was really, I think, uh, really valuable. Praise God. Uh, something else you're talking about, uh, when, when you're trying to love people, a lot of times they won't love you back, you know, there's that resistance, you know, and, uh, but you still got to keep loving them. And, and I heard someone teach one time about how it's like when you still love them, when, they're, when you're not receiving anything back from them, that, that uh, it's like heaping burning coals on their head. You know, back in the Old Testament days, they used to carry coals on their head when they were repenting. Yeah. And when you love them, even though they don't deserve it, it makes them repent. And it's like them, you know, carrying those coals on their head, and uh, yeah. they realize, you know, what how what they really are, and then they then they can change. You know? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And y'all can use that verse even when we're wrong sometimes. Meaning, why I just talking about it. I've taught on it here a few times. I had to repent as a young minister. I first read that. I was like, yes, God, get them. Coals of fire on their head. Now I forgive them. Get them, God. And he, he spoke to me, of course, you know, and said, that doesn't mean what I think you, you think it means. And uh, then I did get to see him repent and turn. And he said, but that's only going to happen when you get your heart right. Just, I thought it was it's funny, but it's not. But 
I don't think there's a believer alive that probably hasn't went through that process with that verse where they've had to get their heart right. So, uh, and somebody else tonight. Good stuff. Thank you for sharing. Love everybody and show compassion and um, tenderness, not arrogance. And um, there's a difference between um, the Holy Spirit on you and in you. Yeah, amen. I'm probably going to be driving that one home. And Brother Don, he brought up with a good point. I, when we teach our basic Bible doctrine, I, I go in depth about the Spirit of Christ. And one reason why I go well, so in depth on this is if you've been around the spirit of the community very long, these are people like to talk about gray areas, but I found with God there's no gray areas. There's just been some time that you didn't spend enough time asking God his point of view on something. And I'm not trying to say I'm not, I'm not trying to be arrogant or all me. I'm just saying what he showed me bears witness in my spirit. And it's just like it's so simple. I'm like, wow, why didn't somebody ever say that a long time ago? Yeah. Instead of trying to wrestle with this stuff. And another valuable thing I learned tonight is Pray for um, a specific thing that you have in your heart and not just pray you that you're going to expect that God will do it for you. Pray mm -hmm. expecting it to happen. And sometimes it's already happened. Yeah, yeah. And you so you it. just have to have, um, you just have to have faith that God will see you through. And if you, you do that, sis, you've already changed your life, I promise. Brother DJ. Thank you. First of all, I'd just like to ask God for forgiveness. Uh, what I got out of that is that I, I sometimes decide who I want to, want to talk to about the word and who I don't. You know, So I have to ask for forgiveness because God didn't give it to me for me to just hold it. He gave it to me for me to give it away. So I got that out tonight. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Somebody else tonight. We got something out of tonight. And I know I say this every time, but every time it's the same. Everybody's human nature is not to say something. Most people are like, I don't want to volunteer or something. But we do this because when it comes out of your mouth and here, it's not as easy for them to steal it out of your spirit out there. And so that is the whole point why I do this every time. So one last time, anybody got something they want to share? Just to, listen, and this is your nugget. You don't have to impress anybody else. It's not their nugget. It's your nugget. Salvation before birth. What's that? Salvation. Salvation. Before birth. Salvation. Oh, yeah, yeah, pray that they get saved. Yeah. Yes, I was just trying to get, you know, you're good. I was just making sure I did the right thing. Yeah. No, you're good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little slow on the uptake. Oh. Catch up to it. Somebody else tonight. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm wondering, can, um, can you get baptized again if you feel you want to get baptized again, even if you already have before? Well, that's a, that's a deep question that people have argued about for centuries. And I will just give you my few cents worth real short. Number one, if you really repented and you really meant it and you got baptized and you know you got off track and you came back but you've never completely fallen away completely from God, then you probably don't need to. Baptism is just an outward showing of an inward change. Okay. But the Bible says also in Acts, it says, repent, be baptized, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I do believe in Hebrews 6, 6, people argue about this verse for centuries, but Hebrews 6, 6 says, if you fall away, to renew your first works again. So then you need to, if you know inside yourself, you don't need me to come tell you and look over your list of stuff, you know if you've truly fallen away from God completely. And if you have, then the Bible says that you have to repent, commit your commit your whole life to him again, which you've probably already done if you're asked, if somebody's asking me that question, then I would encourage you, because that when you get baptized again, it's to let the whole world that's been watching you during this season know, listen, I've changed my life. I'm recommitting my life to Christ. Come watch me and see what I've done. 
And if you've never been baptized, can you make heaven without being baptized? Yes, but it was, I also want to stress, because so many times we got so last lack, lacks of days abilities in the body of Christ, that he didn't say, if you feel like it, repent. If you feel like it, get baptized. If you feel like it, get filled with the Holy Spirit. Those were all commandments from God. Now, he loves you enough, you know, and if you were to give your heart to God tonight, we need to baptize you. have no doubt you'd make heaven. You know, but if you get to heaven, and he says, why didn't you get baptized? Well, I didn't want to. He said, well, you didn't really love me. I know that's strong, but if we can't submit to him in that area, I promise you we're not submitting to the area that really matter. Do you see what I'm saying? So, is there places and times where you should get rebaptized? Absolutely. But can I give you an answer all that everybody needs to get baptized? You know, some churches, no offense, I don't use to talk about some churches, every time you change church, you gotta get baptized in their church and all this crazy stuff. We don't believe it now. Sorry, I just opened up another window. <laughs> We've had there is a difference in the word baptize in the and when you take it back to the original Greek, it, it's baptismo. It means to make fully wet, to fully submerge. So there's no sprinkle for thinking. You're not getting fully wet over that. You know, and the Bible says that they have to confess that Jesus is Lord over in Romans Road. And uh, so you can't do that when you're a baby. You're not, you know, so if you've never been, if you're just now confessing with your own mouth and you've never been fully wet, then you've never been fully baptized. And you need to do that again, which... We've had a few people ask her recently, and we're going to be announcing it again Sunday, and so we're getting put on the books again coming up very soon. Because what I'd be doing, I'm sitting here telling you, if it's, God wasn't asking your opinion, he said, you know, I can't tell you it was commanded from God to not give you the opportunity to get it done. So mm -hmm. it's already it's already been in the works, but so we'll be doing that again. I'm excited about it. And uh, if you want to get baptized, you know, but... I will, I don't want to answer this brashly, but if you got to ask me, if you're concerned enough, you're asking me if you probably need to get baptized, there's probably a reason in there for that. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about in general. In general. You know, if you're concerned enough, you know, now, there's times I know the enemy does try to steal people, you know, and I've seen people get saved every Sunday for weeks and, and, re, and get re-baptized because they don't know who they are in Christ. And that's just from, uh, Need, lack of needing to be taught more of the word. And, uh, but I don't believe that's the case here. I know that wasn't the exact answer, and I don't deal in gray areas, but I don't believe it. I, there's a whole world watching, and I wanted to cover all my bases. Do you, you see what I mean? Uh -huh. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. All right. Anybody else? Sister Rebecca. Jesus said that we would have love for each other. That's how the world would know that we're his disciples. Amen. Amen. And uh, you know how you can really tell when it's real love? When you want to strangle them and you still love them. <laughs> it's fake whenever everybody, you know, I can't stand fakey stuff. I, to be honest, I'm just telling you, so I'm giving you a straight warning. I can't stand fakey stuff. I can't stand fakey people. And if you try to fake it around me very much, you're going to get called out. You know, uh, people are going to rub you the wrong way. You're a human being. Things aren't going to settle well with you. But there's called being a grown up and loving each other enough that you talk it out. Because you may not know their side. They may not know your side. Or it may just be the devil in the middle. Or you may just have to agree to disagree mm -hmm. and love each other anyway. Mm -hmm. But that's what love is. It counts no wrong. It keeps no wrong. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Anybody else tonight? Going once? Going twice? Well, remember me? I'm going down uh, early Friday morning to pick up the young and come back, have Sunday service, and then I'll be taking another group down early Monday morning. And, uh, but they've been doing some phenomenal times and uh, we're, they'll probably be shy, but we're going to be, just to give you a heads up, I know some people say I don't ever tell about stuff, but 
we're going to give all the kids a chance to get share their testimony Sunday morning about what God did for them at camp. So it's going to be good. They've been. I, I wish you could be there. It's a phenomenal experience. So maybe some of you want to go next year. Camp counselor or something would be great, but I don't know. Do QP duty or something else. Anybody else for the once? Twice. Are y'all still enjoying this Holy Ghost series? Yes. Amen. Y'all getting something out of it. That's what matters. Amen. We had a lot of people out tonight. When I tell you to let them know we miss them, I'm not telling you to go beat on them. None of you do that. But, you know, here's the secret. It doesn't matter what reason you miss. The enemy tries to make you feel bad and tries to cut you off from the body. So that whenever somebody comes and tells you you miss, they miss you, that you miss them there, they're always like, oh, they're just getting on me because I wasn't at church. I mean, no, it's true. And you can't bite that bullet when you're letting them know. You can't be offended because they're offended with you. And sometimes they were just homesick and they're like, well, tell me when you don't feel well, it's easy to be a little bit, well, I just missed once. When they're just letting you know, we really missed you. We missed your, I mean, like there's people here tonight, and it's, I tell each one of you, for the record, when, when, when people's not here, you know, the body, each member is supplied. And when you aren't here, it's like part of me is missing. There's something missing from the service. There's something missing from the atmosphere. There's something not the same when you want you not here. I want you to know that. So when I say I miss you and we need you here, that's not just because I want bodies in the Jews. That means that we generally there's part something missing out of the body when you're not here. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Your hand up. No. All right. Absolutely. And I don't care how big a body gets. If you lose your little toe, you know. Mm -hmm. Or if you get your eye missed or whatever. I'm not trying to. I get in trouble. But the point is, is that people are missed. And it doesn't take very long to become part of a body. And so, you know, I know some of you are like, well, I'm not really part. I just show up. Listen, I miss you when you're not here. I guarantee you, I'm checking on you. I guarantee you, you may not hear from me, but you'll hear from somebody connected to me. Amen. <laughs> you know, I may not have your number, but I can make sure you, I put my list, I'll tell on myself, I will make sure I'm tapping on somebody's shoulder that does have your number that's calling to check on you. And sometimes I do it, I'm just going to be honest with you, because if I call you, go, <laughs> I have somebody else call say, hey, we just want to let you know, Pastor, we missed you at church. Oh. <laughs> then am I telling the truth? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, you're right. If I'm calling sometimes, that's because you want, hey, listen, it's time to have CPR. <laughs> but more times than not anymore, I don't know why God's doing it, flowing this way. More times than not anymore, I tell you what, I pray. I pray hard. And if I'm having to put words to it, it's because it's an emergency. Or I know I got to cut something off with him. He's in there trying to play. I mean, no, we're not a, a, a new. The Bible says, you know, we, we quench the fire regards. But like I said earlier, there's something that comes in. I mean, you know, the enemy doesn't. He hates it when people start feeling a place of community. Yeah. Where unity is, God commands the blessing. He absolutely, I believe, hates broken chains, church, for just one of that reason. And he constantly tries to get people to feel like they don't belong. Or they're not a part of this, or they're not a part of that. And I may spend the rest of my life putting out those fires, but that's okay with me. Amen. 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 All right. Let's close in prayer tonight. Lord, we just thank you for your word tonight. Lord, I thank you for the, the study of your word. Lord, I pray it'll be bring forth fruit. Fruit. <laughs> 30, 60, and 100 fold. 
Lord, I thank you for the joy of the Lord, God, that it's our strength. And Lord, I pray that you would just energize and strengthen each one that's here tonight. You'll lift them up with your strong right hand. Lord, I thank you that every attack of the enemy is cut off. And uh, Lord, we pray a hedge of protection, Lord, around each one as they leave this building tonight, God. And Lord, I pray that they'll steward what you've deposited in them tonight and it will grow. And Lord, they will even tend to it, that it will grow even more and more and more. Lord, I thank you for each one. We thank you for allowing us to be here together. And I give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said? Amen. 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 Last thing, this is just me being honored, is, uh, is some people say, Boy, Pat, and I'm not trying to marry it. Some people always say, Boy, Pastor, we enjoy when you pray. And there's coming kind of more times of that. But if y'all want me to pray more, you got to stop trying to run out the back door so fast. <laughs> that way, otherwise, i got to get out there before you get out so I can get you on the way out. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you, pray. Sister Deacon, if you all do a fabulous job praying, mm -hmm. we see John Payne, because I'm not trying to make light of it. I just know that some people say, you want me to pray more? Well, you guys got to stop running off so fast. <laughs> Love you all. Uh, wait a minute. I just got a message I saw here. Miss Christy has not been feeling well, and uh, she wants pressure. She's been sick all day. So that was a quick reply. So, Lord, we just thank you. you sent your word and healed her. And we come together as a body of Christ. And uh, uh, you, you said, if you see, speak a thing, it would be so. So, Lord, we speak and we say, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, Lord, we curse the spirit of infirmity. And it's trying to come around in the spirit of discouragement. And when we speak life over Christy, in Jesus' strong name we pray. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 On another side note, I know I keep saying that. Exciting things. I got my passport again. 